everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am Neha Parashar, working in a healthcare company and based in Germany. In last video, we saw the orphan drug designation procedure in US. In today's video, we will see what are the differences between US and EU orphan drug designation procedure. So let's start. We will compare the EU and US based on the parameters like related laws, regulatory bodies, type of products covered, marketing exclusivity, preference threshold, designation criteria, application submission, review and approval timeline, what are the dossier sections and the incentives. We will discuss all this to compare US and EU. So let's start one by one. First start with related laws. In EU, the law related to orphan drug was first implemented in 2000 in form of this regulation. Okay? In US, Orphan Drug Act which was passed in 1983 was the legal basis for the implementation of orphan drug program in US. So 21 CFR 316, this is the law which contains all the requirements related to orphan drugs in US. Okay, So this is a difference related to the related laws in US and EU. Then the second comparison point is regulatory bodies between the two. In EU, there are two bodies which are involved. First is COMP, which is a committee under EMA, and second is EC. Committee for Orphan Medicinal Product, that is COMP, this review our application and after review gives opinion to EC. If our product should get the orphan drug designation or not, they make this opinion and they give this opinion to EC. And based on this opinion, European Commission or EC, they give the final decision if the drug gets the orphan drug designation or not. While in US, again, there are two bodies which are involved. First is Office of Orphan Product Development, that is OOPD. And second is FDA. So Office of Orphan Product Development or OOPD, which is equivalent to COMP in EU. This is an advisory body providing opinion on the application and FDA, which is equivalent to EC, grants the final decision on orphan drug designation. So this was a difference related to the regulatory bodies involved in their assessment. Then the third comparison point is type of product covered under these regulations. In EU, only medicinal products are covered under the orphan drug concept. While in US, medical devices are also covered. That means in EU, we can only have orphan drugs. No concept of orphan devices, okay? While in US, we can have orphan drugs and orphan devices as well. So this is a main difference which we should be aware about. Then the fourth comparison point is marketing exclusivity granted for orphan drug approval. In EU, 10 years marketing exclusivity is provided for orphan drugs. In addition, if we add pediatric indication, then additional 2 years exclusivity is added. Also, we should know that the marketing exclusivity can also be reduced to 6 years post authorization if we no longer meet the orphan drug designation criteria. For example, if prevalence changes. While in US, 7 year marketing exclusivity is granted for chemicals orphan drug and 12 years for the biological orphan drugs. Okay? In addition, if we add pediatric indication, then additional 6 months exclusivity added. While in EU, this addition of pediatric was how much? 2 years of exclusivity. Right? We just saw that. Also, in US, no reduction of marketing exclusivity even if prevalence changes which was not the case in EU. We just saw that in EU, the marketing exclusivity can be reduced to 6 years post authorization if we no longer meet the orphan drug designation criteria, right? So these are the difference in EU and US. Then the fifth comparison point is prevalence of the disease or in other words, the number of people affected by the disease to qualify it as a rare disease. In EU, the threshold is less than or equal to 5 in 10,000 people in EU, while in US, this is a fixed number that means less than 2 lakhs patient in US. So in EU, this number is a proportion that means 5 in 10,000. While in US, it's a fixed number that means a 2 lakhs, right? So that's how it differs in EU and US. Then the sixth comparison point is designation criteria. As we discussed in last video, in EU, there are three factors. What are those three factors? Prevalence of the disease lack of financial viability and medical needs. 
Medical needs meaning the drug should be for life threatening diseases only for unmet medical needs. There is no satisfactory treatment or drug available. And even if the satisfactory treatment or drug available, your medicinal product is of significant benefit compared to that treatment or drug. So your drug is superior to that available drug. Okay. So the prevalence and lack of financial viability is also defined in US while this concept medical need is not specified as a requirement in US. Okay. So unmet need requirement is unclear in US. Okay. Then the next comparison point is the application submission procedure. In EU, we submit orphan drug designation application to EMA via IRIS portal. And in US, the orphan drug designation application is submitted to Office of Orphan Product Development, that is OOPD, either by a email or by a FDA portal. Okay, so this is a difference from a application uh, submission procedure point of view. Then the eighth comparison point is review and approval cycle. In EU, the time Timetable for submission and assessment is published on their website by EMA. The total review cycle is maximum of 90 day procedure. In EU, dates and review timelines and durations are published with no flexibility. Okay. While in US, it can happen anytime. US has no defined timeline like EMA. The review cycle typically lasts around 90 days. So these are the differences in US and EU with respect to the review and approval cycles. Then the ninth comparison point is the format of dossier section. In EU, the scientific dossier is prepared in section A to E according to EC guideline which is listed here. And in US, the scientific dossier is prepared in line with 21 CFR 316.20 in nine parts. Okay, so this is a difference from a dossier point of view. Then the 10th and last comparison point is the incentive and benefits provided by both the health authorities for orphan drug development. As you can see in this figure that the differences exist for tax credit and specific subsidiaries for clinical trial and priority review voucher, which exist for US and not for EU. Right. So this was all about the differences in the orphan drug regulation between EU and US. But before we end this video, do you know what is the regulatory procedure for orphan drug designation in Japan? If you know the answer, then let me know in the comment section. If not, then don't worry. We'll discuss that in the next upcoming video. Till then, let's stay tuned.